this presentation talks about accounts receivable and the only hard part about accounts receivable really is the uncollectible. So that's what we'll talk about here. Accounts receivable, the problem is when you make a sale on credit, you want the revenue as well as the account receivable to be the total amount of the sale. So if I sell $100,000, I really expect my customer to pay me that whole $100,000. But deep in our hearts, we know that some of those people aren't going to pay us or maybe they're not gonna pay us the total amount. So we know that we really won't collect all of it. And if you remember the definition of a asset is a probable economic benefit. So if we probably won't get it, we really don't want to show it on the balance sheet as an account receivable for the whole amount. So the way we do this is kind of fix it uh, with one of those adjusting journal entries you've grown to love so much. So we're going to expense the amount that you don't plan to collect or you don't think you're going to collect in the year that you made the sale. But we want to keep accounts receivable at the total amount because we really don't know which customer is not going to pay. We just know some of them won't. So we're going to use a contra asset account, meaning an asset account goes on the asset side of the balance sheet, but it has a credit balance. So contra means opposite. So it's a contra asset account uh, that we'll call an allowance account. It's either allowance for bad debts or allowance for uncollectibles. So let's see how we can put that together. There are a couple ways to estimate the uncollectible accounts. We're going to do the easiest one here, which is called percent of sales. So let's assume your total credit sales are $100,000. The year end balance in accounts receivable is 30 and you estimate that 2% of your sales are uncollectible. Since we're basing our estimate on sales, we really don't care about that account receivable balance shown above. So our journal entry is we need to debit an expense account. 2% of 100,000 is 2,000. The idea here is we want to expense the bad debts in the year of the sale. We don't want to wait until they actually go bad. So that's why we make that estimate. The credit is that goofy account, allowance for bad debts. It's a contra asset account, just like accumulated depreciations contra asset, meaning we have a credit balance in there normally, but it goes on the asset side of the balance sheet right after the accounts receivable, and we subtract this from accounts receivable to get net accounts receivable. It's also for $2,000, so our journal entry is bad debt expense debit, credit the allowance for the same amount. Those two accounts are always the adjusting journal entry, always debit the bad debt expense, credit the allowance for bad debts. Don't get confused. There's never any change in that entry. The way this shows on the balance sheet then is you have the allowance for bad debts comes right after your accounts receivable. So you'll have net accounts receivable for 28,000. Finally, the last thing we need to talk about is what do you do when somebody really isn't going to pay you? We call that writing off the account. So let's say a customer goes bankrupt, so you know they're never going to pay. We need to write off the account. The good news is it doesn't make any difference which method you use to estimate the allowance. You always do the same thing for the write-off. As always, the best way to get started with it is with the easiest thing that you know has to happen. The customer's not going to pay you, so the account receivable has to go away. To make that happen, we need to credit the accounts receivable. So I'm gonna kind of start upside down here and put the easy part in first, credit accounts receivable. Then you just have to worry about what account to debit. And we're going to relief, reduce that allowance for bad debts. 
So we're going to debit the allowance, which will reduce that. If you think about it, that was really where you were putting all those uncollectibles until people really defaulted. So now we're going to say, well, this one really defaulted, so they're not part of the allowance anymore. We're going to make that for the $80, and you're good. The write-off is always the same to accounts. Debit the allowance, credit the account receivable. Don't think too much about it. There's a second way to estimate your uncollectibles. So if you're responsible for that in your class, see part two.